feels weird. All righty, righty. I think we're ready. Good All morning. All righty, righty. I think we're ready. Good All morning. <laughs> it's not my first time. I swear. How's everybody doing? Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. How are you? How are you? Hello. Good morrow. Happy Mar March. Happy March. 
Um, happy ZBrushing. Hope everybody's doing okay. Uh, today, we're going to do some leprechaun stuff. It is March, so I figured, you know what, let's do, uh, let's do some leprechaun stuff. Um, can everybody hear me okay? Let's test the audio first. You guys hear me okay? Okay, yeah, looks like it. Okay, we got Facebook people, we've got Twitch people. Okay, cool, we do. All right, that's good. And we've got uh, YouTube people. Cool, let's do it. All right, um, we are just gonna start from scratch here. Where's my tablet? I still have to work. Come on, buddy. Hello, Mr. Tablet. Where are you, Mr. Tablet? Let's see. Nothing like live stuff, huh? <laughs> when things don't work, get out of the car. Get back in the car. Oh, there we go. All right, we are good. Um, so today we are going to start from nothing and hopefully have something cool by the end of it. We are going to do uh, set pivot point is what I want. Pivot point is uh, yeah, that's what I want, right? All right, so wherever I click, it's going to rotate around that. That's what I want. Okay, cool. We've got symmetry going on, and let's roll. Uh, this is just a, a straight sphere that's been uh, polymeshed. Okay. And we're just going to start and block out the head. How's everybody else doing? Good, hopefully. And then we're just going to Dynamesh. Maybe we go just a little bit lower for now. So maybe um, 56. Let's try that. Yeah, that's OK for now. All right. So um, we just get a basic shape here, the head. Sure, sounds good. Maybe it's a little. Yeah, you don't have to yell at Charles. Jeez. <laughs> uh, I think the video will continue to say that if uh, until you refresh it. So if it's still saying uh, Anna, maybe you try refreshing and it will it should update it. The Twitch page has it correct. So. All right, let's get some eyes. Turn off my lazy mouse. We're just gonna start blocking in some stuff. Getting some stuff going. Okay, maybe we'll get a neck going in here. Look, it's a neck. Oh, looks like a Pez. We will be uh, in what they call the Valley of the Suck for a little while, which uh, Mr. Kinzen likes to call the time from the beginning until it starts looking cool. <laughs> All right, so we're just going to hear my dog snoring in the background back there. It's always fun. Take a rest, Tilly. Okay. What's up, Charles? Ah, uh, thank you very much, man. It has definitely been a dream project to be on, for sure. It's been an honor of a lifetime to, to work on Marvel's Avengers. Let's just get some kind of resemblance of a bust here. I like just, just getting just a little bit so that you can start playing with the, the basic proportions of how big the head is. So we're just going to grab some stuffs. Let's read Dynamesh. OK. 
Okay, cool. And already he's looking super creepy. <laughs> there we go. Get a little bit of a jaw there. Just playing with some super, super quick proportions. It has been a while since I streamed a like way long time. Of course, I've been ridiculously busy with uh, with work. So if you can tell, I just released Hawkeye, which is awesome. We also just announced Black Panther. Ooh, snaps! Okay. Uh, so usually at this point, um, I like to get at least some eyeballs in here so we can start kind of building the overall th um, eye area. So typically what I do is I'll just uh, append in a sphere, a sphere, take it off to one side, scale it down, take a look at the, do a 90 degree. Then we'll decide about how small or large we want. Bring that over. Get that about in the right place. So I want this dude to have like super, super sunken eyes. And probably um, maybe just a little offset, like a little bit wide. It tends to get the creep factor up just a little bit. And then we'll just do a mirror and weld. Cool. And then now we can build around that. So we'll head back to this guy. And we start building up some shapes around the eye. So here's eye socket. Um, I typically try to use the um, the ghosting, which is uh, transparency. So in transform, we can turn on transparency and ghost. So what that means is um, I can still see the eyeball, but I can sculpt behind it. So if you, if it's solid, sometimes it doesn't really you can't really grab the things behind it the way that you want to. So I, I tend to just use transparency and then grab and go from there. All right, and then you got some eyes. All right, and then you can start kind of playing around with. Uh, I move pretty fast also through different uh, brushes. So if you're ever wondering which brush that I'm kind of switching to or moving from, um, you can all take a look up here, and that will get you what I'm doing. Okay, so in this case, the move brush a little bit. Uh, I asked this question a lot recently, I'm trying to get an expert opinion. Being a young, motivated, self-taught 3D artist, do you think employers care about a uni degree? Uh, Spencer is asking about uni degrees and if if people care about it. Um, I think one of the only real things, uh, so here's, here's, here's what I have to say about degrees. Um, typically, typically studios really only care if you have awesome art. Um, you know, it's, it's great to have an education and just from, uh, the standpoint of, um, you know, general, knowledge um, it's good to be educated but for the most part studios don't typically look at you know where where you have been or what your degree is um, it's really all about it's all about your artwork and your uh, portfolio now there are some instances when a degree is very important so like when you are dealing with uh, the government it is really important so you know if you're if you're working overseas or if you're trying to come to the states or if you're trying to um, anywhere where you need some kind of like work visa or something like that then then yes it's very it's important for that um, but as for you know let's say you're local uh, and um, you know, a, a visa isn't really a, a, a concern, then yeah, it's, it's really about just 
your portfolio. Okay, so we're going to just take a look at just some basic profile. And right now, I think the eyes are a little too far apart. So we're just going to bring those a little bit closer together. And we'll start playing with the closer together thing later. Just kind of pull this stuff in for now. All right. Um, so what the other thing I want to do is I want to block out some of the big things first. So I'm going to um, I'm going to put a hat on this guy, and I'm going to design around the typical like leprechaun hat. So I think to do that we're just going to grab a cylinder. Something like that. And then what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually just going to duplicate this guy real quick. Duplicate. And then we... Oh, nope. Not that. That one. Just take this down here. Just give him a brim real quick. Alright, so we've got something super, super quick. Uh, let's see what else we got nowadays. Uh, creating a principal character in AAA. Um, for for materials like he really. Uh, so the question is, uh, with photo mode and stuff, you guys mostly use masks and tiled textures for materials, I imagine. For modularity, yeah. Typically, I mean, it really depends on what um, what what the engine handles and what your um, what your engineers kind of I've kind of already set up. Um, so it, re it really depends, but to try to get the most out of uh, m you know, textile density space, uh, you tiled tiled materials using tiled materials is probably one of the better ways to go for sure um, so if you can if you can if you can do that that's awesome but there's also something to say about the simplicity of uh, using one-to-one -one textures um, there's a there's a happy ground <laughs> somewhere in the middle um, have I, I would say using uh, tiled materials is probably one of the better ways to go, but there are definitely cases where uh, you want to be able to kind of break and use um, one to one. So it's really kind of the best of both worlds. So I'm just going to kind of give some, try to get some simple, interesting shapes to the hat just to kind of start off with. Um, I'm just going to turn my intensity down on my smooth brush. And then I use um, Alt Smooth quite a bit. So if you hold down Shift, right, and then you start smoothing, but then if you lift off of Shift um, and keep smoothing, what it does is it tries to maintain the overall volume of what your mesh is, uh, but just kind of redistribute the... Um, the edge loops. Just going to just give it a quick. All right, something super. All right, now you see where we're going. All right, so let's let's get a little bit more form so he's not so kind of janky looking. Give him some traps back here. Um, let's see. I'm trying to get some of these questions as well too. Also, how limited do you think em employment would be without uh, without without a degree? Um, yeah, I think I think I answered that one. Yeah. 
yeah um you know uh, yeah modularity i think is is the better way to go for materials and stuff um but there are definitely times when you need to be able to have some one-to-one -one textures um but the ideal is to is to be able to use repeating tiled uh, materials to get like the best the best okay uh let's crack on with some Let's bring the face in just a little bit. So a lot of times when you're sculpting heads, um, you kind of forget to look at different angles. So what I always forget is to look at the bottom and then look at the top. All right, so if we look at the top, we kind of look and see that the skull is, can get pushed back on the corners here a little bit. And you look back here and for a normal human face, this is way too far in. So we can try to bring that out a little bit and at least get some. Get some better shapes happening here. Okay. Back and cut in just a little bit. So just trying to kind of find your legs here get it <laughs> um, I think the these need to come back a little bit they really want to have kind of more of a sunken sunken eyes feel All right so we pull this back and then we pull that out I think we'll have a little bit of a pointy chin There we go. That's starting to get a little bit better. Um, let's see. Uh, more questions. Tips for beginning sculptors. Uh, yeah, I think some of my, my biggest tips for, for beginning is focus on what makes good design. Like the technical stuff uh, you can you can get to. The technical stuff is not the, the hardest things to do. It's really uh, training your eye how to read design is, I think, one of the biggest thing that takes the longest um, and is probably the most important, uh, the most important skill out of sculpting is what makes good shapes. So the more you can work on training your eye how to make good shapes, um, the easier pretty much everything becomes. Uh, I think the the other big thing too is patience. I think you know, just being persistent and not giving up uh, is is huge. Like you, you see me struggling. <laughs> I've been doing art for a long time, and I still struggle in the beginnings. Right, but it's just kind of about uh, being persistent and you know looking at shapes and looking at relationships between forms and those types of things um, and being patient. I think are the the biggest things for when you're starting. Um, working on a property by a third party like Marvel, how much freedom do you usually get while working on your designs and stuff? Um, give you quite a bit of freedom. Uh, I think it really depends on the the existing relationship with uh with a third party um every 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 relationship's a little bit different um and then every property is a little bit different so you know you have to it's a, it's a little hit and miss sometimes sometimes you have a lot of freedom uh and sometimes uh things are more important to your third party which is totally fine you know um especially some of the work that I work on, uh, it's, you know, very, pretty iconic. Um, the Avengers are very iconic. And there's certain things that, uh, you know, your client is really good at for nailing the overall feel um, of a particular character. I'm going to flip that to that side. Actually, I'm not, I'm just going to mirror it because I want to do this side first. Um so they they tend you know the whoever owns it usually knows that particular character pretty good 
<laughs> so, uh, you know, it's really about a partnership and not necessarily, you know, having to do what somebody else tells you to do. It's really about like, how, how do, how do I, you know, how do we benefit out of your experience and my experiences, that kind of thing, you know, how do, how do we take what we do good and what you do good and make something amazing? So I'm just kind of going to get in some very, very quick ears. All right, so, hey, look, we got almost a leprechaun. Hey, Ashley, what's up? Oh, man, I got to I gotta up my game now. Ashley's here. <laughs> Bluxy, what's up, dude? How you doing? Uh, why is it so difficult to get a job in the industry, bruh? Um, it is really diff. It, it's difficult, but you know, it's it's a little bit of a double-edged edge uh, blade when it comes to kind of getting into the industry and stuff. Like, like, you know, it's it's not necessarily about. Um, let me turn on my symmetry. There we go. It's really about your portfolio. It's really about your portfolio. And that's good and bad, right? So your portfolio does all the talking for you. If you have an awesome portfolio, that gets you work. <laughs> you know? Uh, if you if you if you still are kind of working on uh, you know, getting to a professional level, uh, then then typically it's it's a little bit more difficult to to get traction but that's a good gauge on you know where where your skills are all right so what i'm gonna do right now is um i'm just going to quickly pull some of this in but i don't want to pull this in so one of the things that i use is a back face mask and again it's it's specific to what brush you're using. So in this case, I'm going to, I'm holding down control to get to my mask and then I use back face mask. And this can be found in brush auto masking back face mask. So if we look at brush, if you want to find it, auto masking back face mask is right here and it's, it's brush specific. So, um, now when I use my masking brush with back face mask on, it doesn't, it doesn't hit back here which is good because then I want to flip this and then just just take it in like that, right? But I didn't want to affect this side. So back face mask is, is something I use quite a bit, especially when I have um, thin things, right? So you're like, oh, I'm going to sculpt this in. It was far enough that it didn't really matter. <laughs> so that didn't work. Uh, it worked, but didn't show the... Uh... Anywho, um... Okay, let's get let's push this in a little bit. Okay, so now I'm I'm kind of getting the essence of the character first. I'm not worried about you know making things look super pretty. What I want to do is um, if I if I'm creating a character, I really want to get the essence of him first. That's that's just me. Bring him back. Okay. Oh, I. I make the shapes. Uh, you make, but you make better shapes, Ashley. If you guys, um, if you don't know uh, Ashley, a a cubed, she is a, an amazing creature artist who also streams here on the ZBrush channel, and uh, she's really, really great organic uh, creature. I actually sit and watch her streams and go, dang those shapes but those shapes man they're so good <laughs> um let's see what else we got uh what which are basic tools and brushes you recommend for uh to begin for a noob like me I, honestly um when you're starting i think one of the biggest things that you can do is not get too lost in the tools right it's not about the tools it's about how you use the tool Again, looking from the bottom here, don't forget to look at the bottom. <laughs> um, it's it's about what you can do with the tools. So if you're if you're just kind of getting started and you're like, what do I do? Like this is this just vast 
amount of work and things to learn and and all that focus uh, i would take like your first like three or four brushes and then just use those don't use anything else and work on your art principles right what is what is sh uh shape uh you know large medium small shapes you know balance of uh details um uh presentation like all of those base artistic um idea ideologies and just work on those work on like what what makes something feel good and study i think that's the other big thing too is like you should just go and study good art why is it look why does it look good go look at um you know i look at uh steve wang you guys don't know who steve wang is he's an amazing amazing uh creature artist that has been in uh creature effects for ages and just looking at his work is just like you look at it and you're like oh my gosh that's so cool that's awesome but study why why is it cool you know figure out why things are cool it's usually because it has good art principles applied to it uh alex i think if you um if you refresh the youtube uh stream it should fix the uh the title it is not anna i apologize i'm not anna she's a little more pretty than i am <laughs> okay so now i feel like okay we've got we've got some kind of creature-esque dude uh with a top hat right but that's not what's the other iconology of the top hat is the, like the little buckle and the um the thingamajig right so let's do that real quick for clothing do you prefer using marvelous designer or do you feel everything should be done in zbrush uh nikoni uh, it's really about what's best for that particular um that particular piece really um if if it's like if it's drapery um you know it's like something that's coming over and then you know like it, it's really tough to figure out how things are kind of draping over something then i'd probably go into marvelous designer but if it's like a loincloth or something like that or something that's just kind of falling over and it's fairly simple i'll just use zbrush for it it's whatever is quickest uh to get you where to where you need to be so if you look at the the reference that you're trying to hit for cloth and you say okay well um, I got to figure out all of that fold logic. It's much easier to get the base fold logic of something that's complicated in cloth from Marvelous Designer, and then take it in once you have those like the base, the basic forms of the of the cloth, and then you just take it back into ZBrush from there. Um, all right, we are going to use. All right, so I want to I want just a band around here. There's tons of ways you could do it, but I want to show just using um, the Z modeler brush. So I'm going to Here's what I'm going to do. Okay. Um it's been a little while since I used this. <laughs> so I'm just going to hide this. Uh, then we're also going to go down to uh, display properties and we're going to do double so that you can see. So we'll switch that off to the other side. So I want three in here. I'll grab my lasso tool. And then I'm just going to take those. I want this last guy in here. So I want just these guys. So what I can do is just let's mask that and then we'll say um, group masked. That will give me this is uh, polygroups group masked. Right. So we got that. And then. Then what I can do is go back into my Z modeler brush. Uh, we'll do Q mesh, uh, but we'll do polygroup all. And then we can just do this. So the question is, do I want to have it connected or do I want to have it separated? 
And I like having him separated so that I can I can move it. I've got to move it, move it. Um, and one of my actually favorite ones is if you hold uh, shift, it will not give you a new loop. It will just kind of extrude like that, right? Instead of like that. But if you hold control, this is the best one. It just rips off that piece. That's what I love right there. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And then I'll just split that. So now I have um, that guy, which is cool. Just turn that back on. And then now I can just go, just key mesh that in. If I want it a little bit thicker, I can uh, key mesh the outside out. But if I hold shift, then I can just extrude the out the outer portion, and not have that extra um, edge loop in the on the inside. All right, so now I have that piece. I have this piece. It's just three. Okay, cool. All right, so now uh, the reason why I pulled it off like that is because I want to be able to vary up the distance if I want. Or the thickness, if I want. I'm sorry, I'm missing your questions right now, but give me one second. I'm, I'm in the groove, man. I'm in the groove. All right. So if we take a look at this guy, right now we've got this. I could do group by normals and get rid of. Give me the thing. Uh, you want to be like that, huh? I just want to delete these guys. So we'll do delete hidden. All right. So now the problem is now I got this hole. There's a couple ways you can do it. If you want to keep it, you could just close those gaps. Or uh, in this case, I think I'm just going to dynamesh it. This is not what I wanted to do. Actually, we'll just leave it. We'll just leave it like that. That's fine. Okay, so now I want to make a little buckle up there. Uh, if I'm using the Marvelous Designer, the newest cloth brush and sculpting is powerful. Yeah, again, um, using the, the dynamics in here is really good too. Um, if you want to just get something super quick, uh, just using the dynamics in here is really awesome as well. Picture like the details are okay, but the main site not, but not on YouTube. Ah, that's unfortunate. But oh well. Okay, so then we made, made to make a little buckle. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna build it from this. How do you do that, Brendan? That's a good thing you asked. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to grab something like this right and so this is the shape that I want right a little buckle sure that sounds good and then what I'm gonna do is uh, Q mesh poly group all again and then I'm just going to hit um, control to rip that off just like that now the reason why uh, we'll do split hidden. Cool. The reason why I'm doing that is because um, I'm building it from this surface is because I want to maintain this um, this curvature. So it's easier to just kind of build it from that surface, rip it off, and then create it from there, and it will maintain that. So then let's just cool. Whoa, buddy. Whoa. I'm just going to end up um, I'm going to end up dynameshing this anyways. I just want to get the overall shape real quick. Just get it in and then we'll go from there. Okay, 
something like that. We'll flatten this guy out just a touch. Okay, now what I can do is I can take this dude. <laughs> sneaky, sneaky. And again, this is all going to get dynamashed and resculpted anyways. I just want to get the the overall feel. There we go. So I don't want to spend too much time on this part. I just want to get the overall feel, right? You're like, oh, okay, that's a leprechaun. Got it. Iconology first. Okay, what, uh, what else do I miss? Do, 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 do. Sound effects are very important. I, that's what I have been a big proponent of my entire life. And you can also talk with, uh, with Paul about that. Paul's a big fan as well. With his little look up here. It's my favorite. Okay. I think that's that's good enough to continue going, right? You get the general. Oh, look, it's a I'm a leprechaun. All right, let's continue with the fun stuff then. Now that <laughs> we've got most of that out of the way. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make, jump this up to 128 here. Um, I want to start kind of getting into some more secondary shapes. Okay, there we go. And let's just start kind of pushing and pulling and getting some. The feel, the f hit me in the feels, man. All right, we want to start explaining what the the theme of this dude's face is. And right now, he's looking kind of like prim and proper. <laughs> Hello, I'm a leprechaun. <laughs> we don't want that. We don't want. Don't, don't, we don't want that. We want a mean leprechaun. We want mean. Uh... Hey, I'm a leprechaun. Give me all your gold. <laughs> I actually tend I, I I find myself doing that quite a bit. Uh when I'm trying to kinda get an overall feel of a character, I actually I'll grunt and or I'll be happy. <laughs> um yeah, Z modeler hype. Did you, what do you think about the new extrude and mesh balloon brushes? Um I haven't really had a chance to use them yet. I think it it's really good. It it it's it's great for like um getting things in pretty quickly. Let's fix his eyes. I think it's uh, it's I think it's you know whatever tool works best for you, you know like you really kind of got to get in and, and figure out what kind of you know what floats your boat and I mean, what are you comfortable with. Um, I think it's a, a anything any kind of tools that that uh, help you get to a place faster um, is good, you know? So if, it, if it's if it's something that gets you to the creative part quicker, awesome. 
just kind of kind of play around with some. I don't even I don't even know what shape language this guy has yet. So I'm still trying to figure out, you know, what's his what's his shape motif, right? Does he have definitely deep set eyes? Let's let's okay. Now that we got the top hat, we got it. Okay, cool. Let's let's hide it for a bit though. Now he looks like a chef. Oh, would you like some potatoes of that? <laughs> <laughs> you can't laugh at yourself. What are you doing in life? <laughs> Okay, so I kind of got like this, like pointy, like this general, f this feeling going. Uh, I kind of like it. Maybe we can we can keep that kind of going, and it's got like this kind of this vector of shape. I don't like the front. The front is kind of bugging me. So let's try to. Let's try to find some. I think his zygoma is way too low, so we're just going to bring that up. Fails a little bit better. Let me get a little. I'm going to try to just exploring right now of what what kind of shapes feel good like what kind of secondary shapes feel good and this is the fun kind of exploratory time when you can decide the overall feel I'm getting a bit of a lip here all right, we've got sides of the lip that come in. This kind of comes down. This is the fun part for me. Is trying is is getting the the essence. Like right now is when you start building the essence of of your character. Sometimes you just gotta let it, let it do its thing, and just listen to what the shapes are trying to do. It's this weird balance of the the life of the piece that you're making versus the energy that you're putting into it. Maybe what I'll do is I'm going to bring up, tilt the eyes just a touch. Kind of give it this, right, he's, so he's got kind of like this, this line of, of shapes going this way, but then now he's also kind of got from the front this line, right? It's coming in, it's kind of all going down this way to kind of his mouth, right? So that's what it's speaking to me as right now, and I'm going to just listen to that. So that's kind of cool. All right, so we've got maybe he has like this super. Undercut. Okay. Lips tick typically have the was it the filtrum? Filtrum. That's what it's called. I forget sometimes. Okay. 
okay, cool. He's he's kind of got a face. His head is a little kind of wackadoo up here, but how do we push him further? Right now he's just like, ah, it's just a head. It's just a head. Let's let's play around with some. How do we make it distinctive feel? Well, maybe we can we can start pushing and pulling outside of a typical. Um, human physiology, or like a, yeah, human physiology. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to still listen to the direction that it's going, right? I'm looking at, you know, everything kind of kind of comes in this way. So I'm not going to do this type of thing, right? I don't want to do shapes like that because it may kind of break that feel of this coming in this way. You know, there's a there's a time and a place for that to be able to, to break something, but you also want to listen to what it's doing, right? Listen to what your sculpt is saying. Okay, it's doing a thing. Let's see. Maybe we could build out some of the temple in here. I'm not going to spend too much time on his forehead up here because he's got a <laughs> he's got a hat on. So um, I do just kind of want to. Yeah, the beard will come later. This needs to get. All right, so maybe we've got a little bit of sag down here in the middle. And then we've got like this, right? So he's still got this this feel, right? This way. So maybe the eyes are kind of doing the same thing. If we could push it more out of the realm of 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 human and more into the realm of awkward <laughs> beard definitely takes time to grow uh the youtube stream should still be going it may have the um the wrong name on it because uh, i had to change the title it was something else before so now we're starting to get some cool shapes happening Yeah, I see. Uh, the reason why I don't want a beard yet is um, I'm, I may change the shape of the jaw, right? Yep, yep, no problem, no problem. Um, you know, maybe he's no, doesn't look good. Maybe it's maybe that, right? So if I have a beard, then now I got problems. <laughs> Actually, I kind of like that. I maybe we'll. We'll push this in a little bit. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Anna, I, I definitely look a little bit different from Anna today. Okay. So we still have, um, you know, some, some some of the core structures of what a face is, right? A functional face will typically have some of the same things, you know, like um, the supporting shapes for the lips down here. You know, you typically will have, um, you know, the nodule on the on the corners there. We ne we don't necessarily have a nasal labial fold, uh, but this guy looks a little bit different from that. But you know, we have a nostril, we have philtrum, we have uh, lips and a chin. He does need a little bit more of a neck back here though.
There you go. Nice starting to be something. Let's take a look at what everything looks at, at like at the moment. Well, his ears are clipping. <laughs> we gotta fix that. He forgot his daisy old lady will fold at home. Yeah. That's exactly it. <laughs> All right, uh, okay, so let's take this. I, I kind of like the direction it's going. If I was doing more of like a concept phase, you know, I may I may stop here and then just re-sculpt the head again uh, in a different style. But considering, you know, we only have, what, another hour? Uh, let, let's just continue forward with this guy. I think he's, he's, he's savable at this moment, so. Give him some landmarks out here. Yeah, you know, you don't necessarily have to block out ac ac accessories um, all the time. Uh, Raphael is saying, I have a bad, I have, I'm creating the habit of not only blocking out accessories, but giving it details early stage. Is it bad? I mean, should I block everything before moving to secondary? Um, I think one of the biggest things to learn is to is to listen to yourself and figure out, you know, what works best for you. So I would try it a couple of different ways, you know, like block out something, um, some stuff early, uh, but then try, try it the opposite way at some point. For me, uh, when I'm doing stuff like this, if I'm if I'm going for a very specific uh, type of creature or something, I'm like, oh, I want it to be a leprechaun. Right? I want it to be an evil leprechaun or something like that. I, I, I want to block out the iconic things first so it gives it its its identity. You know what I mean? For me, having something that is quickly identifiable um, lets you focus on other things quicker. So that's why, especially, you know, when I'm streaming, obviously it's a little bit different. Um, can we just dynamesh that guy? Yeah, let's just dynamesh him. We got enough, there we go. I actually kind of like that it's pointy equals evil. Not necessarily, but, uh, that's the the general consensus. He's still not very evil looking, right? He's just still kind of just, me, 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 oh, uh, uh, pardon me, would you happen to have some gray poupon? <laughs> That's kind of what he's what he's saying at the moment. So I kind of I want to start pushing him a little bit further. You know, how do how, so how do we do that? Maybe more skull like. And you know, what if I bring in his his nose like this? Got like this. <laughs> I try not to listen to myself because I'm an idiot sometimes. I yeah, I am too. I, I guess the the real trick is to know when to listen to yourself and when to tell yourself to shut up. Yeah, we could do fangs. The problem with opening up the mouth at this point is it just I don't have the time to do the mouth, the inner mouth, a lot of justice. Um, so I'm trying to trying to see what I can do without having to open up that can. You know what I mean? We may actually be ready for another. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. I kind of. I'm, so I'm pretty good with the shapes as, as of now. 
I kind of like what's what's happening and I want to explore it further. So I think I'm going to jump up to say 256. We'll take a look. Redynamesh. I think that would be plenty. Um, if when I when I get to this point and I kind of ready to go up in in Dynamesh, uh, and you up res and we kind of got all of these this kind of cleanup stuff to do. Uh, I actually use clay polish. I'll just run a, a thing of clay polish on it real quick, and it will typically clean up a lot of those like these little kind of gross areas in here that I don't want to have to go and do on my own, right? It's, it enhances some of the things that are already there and gives me a good base to continue forward. You just have to remember to clear your mask because clay, clay polish will leave a, a mask on there. All right, so now I have like this, this nice palette to, to kind of push this even further. So now we're going to get into some smaller shapes. So maybe he's got this. Just gonna start playing around with some some bigger moves real quick, just to see if we can push them a little further. At, at this point too, uh, one of the one of the big things is uh, frequency of detail, right? You want to have places where your eyes can rest, as well as places your eyes can have fun looking at little details. Each one enhances the other. So I want to make sure while I'm I'm planning out these um, secondary shapes that I have places of rest right now it's still a little noisy in front right so i have places of rest here but then everything else right there's there's a lot of noise frequency here a lot of noise frequency in here so maybe what i'll do is we'll just give maybe this a little bit of rest in here Right, it's starting to feel a little bit better, right? So we've got noise frequency, noise frequency, rest, 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 noise. Right. You got to strike that balance pretty, pretty well. Make sure that you have enough rest area. That's actually been one of my downfalls for quite a long time. And it's something that I struggle with quite a lot. Um, I'm just, I'm a sucker for detail so I love having as much detail as I can um, and I, I tend to forget uh, quite a lot to give the eye some rest
There you go, that's looking pretty cool. I think this guy may end up being just a more kind of like sophisticated creature <laughs> and not necessarily like a gruesome creature. Because um, it's just, I, I feel like I'm fighting that already. And I'm trying to listen more often. actually fairly cool okay with that so far what's up site how you doing man okay I think what I'm going to try to do is do a little bit of um, I'm okay right now so here's what I'm thinking in my brain case um, I, I I like where it's at now, and then now what I want to do is kind of get the other pieces closer to what I've established here, All right? So we can start filling out the rest of the look. I'm good, dude. It's good to see you, man. Mr. Side. Uh, so let's give him a shirt. Let's see how let's how, see how we're gonna give him a shirt. I think what, one of the things I can do really quickly, oops, just mask off a portion here. And again, like this goes back to the question that we had earlier about Marvelous Designer and, you know, where, where, where and when do you do Marvelous Designer and where and when do you not? In this case, uh, I'm just going to do like a simple like collared shirt. Um, so I don't. I don't need to go into Marvelous Designer and create, take the time creating all of the those pieces, you know. I can just as easily mask out a portion here and then just use that, you know. Um, so in this case, just using ZBrush probably is, a, is, is good enough for me. It's good enough for me. Um... So one of the things that I'm thinking is, you know, we'll just extract from here. Maybe just use the extract thing, right? Tool, subtool, extract. Uh, but when I do that, I don't want to have this corner to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold off till right about there, and then I'll just sculpt the rest. So what does extract look like? Sure. Maybe we'll, instead of double, we'll do. I think actually 0.02 is okay. I want to have enough thickness to it um, that when I sculpt on it, uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. I'm not worried about the inside of it. Sure, that looks good. So we'll accept that, and then that just created this. All right. That's a. That's definitely enough for me to go in and sculpt on. Uh, so let's turn on, does Leprechaun fight? Uh, you know, I, I think if you piss it off enough, like, he would probably fight you. Actually, you know what, this guy with, you know, how he kind of looks, I would probably think he's, he's more about, uh, telling you the clever things and that, that you will just end up backing off because he's convinced you that that's really not the right move for you to do <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> he looks like that kind of leprechaun there you go so he's starting to so then we can come in and then you know what is you do it again right so we have back face mask on so maybe I'll just take this 
and create the collar from here. Okay, maybe we'll just do extract again. Cool, let's keep, uh, well, this one, yeah, let's just do it. Uh, let's do extract again. Hit accept. Okay. Ooh, that's gross. How do you fix that? Turn that back on. We're just going to... We're just going to clean up by hand. Sometimes you just got to get in and get your hands dirty. You know what I mean? thousand ways to skin a cat and this is just how I want to do it this time You can also come in with the um, the uh, trim brush, which I use quite a bit, Trim Dynamic, and if you just want to clean up some of these edges, you can do it that way. Um, there's so many different clean ways you could do this. Right now, I'm just um, just trying to block it out and trying to get something that tells a story. Um, and really, one of the quicker ways that I can do that is to just just do it real quick. Just, um, if it's a production model, you know, obviously you'd be doing it a little bit different. Um, but in this case, you know, maybe you're just, you're getting a, uh, a block mesh ready for um, production. You know, you're like, what, is the, what does the block look like? You know, what are the overall dimensions and proportions and stuff? Let's give this guy a little bit more. Let's say one one twenty eight. And then uh, I'm gonna upres that real quick. I go to geometry and do clay polish. Clear the mask. Cool. Now it's you know sometimes these um, processes that you use will give you the things that you want inadvertently. Right, so this guy's kind of, it's not like super prim and proper and like everything's is exactly correct. Um, he's a little bit more kind of messy and right, and those, the type of feel the character is, like, is, should go into some of the shapes that make that character. Right, so even the subtle things, uh, the subtle shapes that are in a character help explain what type of character that is. So in this case, I really like having inconsistent edge flow, right? Because it kind of goes along with the persona of him that I want to come across, right? He's kind of like this haphazard, uh, you know, a, I see an opportunity, I take an opportunity kind of feeling to it. So that kind of makes him rough around the edges, right? So then some of his shapes I can get to help bolster that type of feel to his personality, I want to do that. Let's clean up some of this stuff a little bit real quick. We done mesh that guy. Let's do 256 on that guy. 256. Let's take a look at that. Okay, cool. Let's dynamesh. Let's get rid of all the polygroups. OK. 
Okay. Weld. Alright, let's fix up some of these kind of major shapes here. We do want to give them at least... There we go, flat. Come on, gimme symmetry. Thank you. We'll just we can just flatten this out a little bit. Pull that out. Flatten. We'll just clean up some of the shapes a little bit here. Uh, can you explain a bit about the face planes, Ibrahim? Um, uh, this guy's face planes or face planes in general? Just give this a little bit more detail now. This is a little, little too low detail to match everything else. And I think I'm at a point where I just want to integrate the two. So... Uh, usually before I, in general, oh, yeah, um, yeah, maybe a bit deeper than I want to go into at the moment. Uh, it's, it's a very, so that's a very deep conversation, <laughs> um, that m may not, uh, be enough for the 45 minutes I have left. What I would say is if, if you want to know, um, you know more about the general shapeology of um, of faces in general. I think um, an anatomy book would probably be best for that. Um, but yeah, smooth surface after dynamesh. I could I can um, I can show you. So let's say let's say this ear. I want to get it to a point where, um, you know, it's at least to the same standard as this guy. So what I'll do is I'll take a look at how much geo it has now, what it's at. It's at 128, so maybe we'll just double that to 256. Okay, up res that. All right, so the problem then becomes, you're like, well, you still have kind of all these artifacts and stuff. Uh, what I do to clean that up really quickly with, uh, you know, you could just come in with a smooth brush and just smooth all that down. That's one way to do it. Um, and then the other way you can do it is just go into geometry. This is what I do a lot of the times. So I'll just, I'll just sculpt the crap out of something, redynamesh it, up res dynamesh it, and then come into clay polish and just do a, a quick default layout uh, settings clay polish. And it will typically clean up a lot of that stuff for you. Um, it does leave a mask, so you want to make sure you clear your mask first. And then you can just go in with your smooth brush. And just start kind of sculpting away. I think they feel a little, a little too far forward, so I'm going to pull them back just a touch. You know, so it feels like it was crowding the front of the face a little bit. Now it's a little too far back. <laughs> It's all about that balance. So in this case, it's really important to know typically where the ear hole is on the skull um, and where it uh, leads in terms of uh, 
of where the hole is in the skull, right? So you have the zygomatic bone that comes back. Um, it runs over your temporalis bone and then underneath is your mandible. Um, so typically you have your zygomatic arch that comes back and then your ear hole is right behind your um, condyle and just below your um, zygomatic arch. That feels a little bit better. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to combine these now. Let's push that in a little bit. Feels better. But before I do, usually what I'll um, I'll just duplicate both sets and then combine them into one. So I'm going to duplicate this guy. I'm going to do shift click, send that all the way down to the bottom, turn that off. Um, then we'll go for the ears. Let's take that up to the top. Uh, we'll duplicate that and then we'll send the duplicate down to the bottom, turn that off. And then now I have a duplicate of both. All right, so let's shift click, I'll turn everything off and we could just look at that. Still feels just too far back, but I think we're gonna go with that because we can do it. All right. Now look at the difference, right? So this one's 256, this one's 256, and I think that's that's enough. All right, so we'll just do merge down. That's fine. And then we'll redynamesh. Cool. And then now I can just sculpt those together. Okay, um, we got about 40 minutes left, so we have about 10 more minutes of sculpting, and then we'll get into some um, fiber mesh. All right, so let's just try to get up some of the just the basic shapes of the ear. All right, this kind of goes in. We got this little doohickey thing there. This goes in, the ear hole goes back there. Okay. We'll just get some shapes in here. I got enough room on the back. I think maybe I could use a little bit more here. There we go. Uh, and then we'll have this ridge that kind of comes down there. And again, I just want to get something that feels okay. I'm not worried about getting everything anatomically correct for a pointy leprechaun ear. Just want to get enough so it feels in the realm of natural. And then by giving it some adjustments here. So that it can look interesting from all rotations. All angles. Now that they're they are together, I can just pull it forward if I need to. Okay, um, let's go, let's turn this stuff back on. Maybe his, his hat sits on his ears. Yeah, man, yeah. That's cool. Oh, 
Uh, one thing people don't get that in studios is that you don't get to model from scratch. It's usually a base model. Yes, this is very true. Uh, typically, typically you have base meshes that you that already have um, all of your UVs set up. Um, yeah, a, a lot of times you. Just, you All right, I think we need a little bit more detail on his eyes, so let's go in just a little bit because that's where we we see things quite a bit. All right, so then this is this is why live watching people live is awesome uh, because you come across situations where you don't necessarily get in a tutorial. So when I read Dynameshed, I lost a lot of this information that I really liked up here and the question is do I want to sculpt that back and try to get it back or how could I get it back because everything has its own um, its own history watch this I actually do this quite a bit I'm gonna go back to where just before I like all that stuff I like all that stuff all right just before I brought that back in here so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to duplicate this and if I duplicate it it's not going to so it'll give me a new one with fresh history but if I go back to this one, it still has this history in it, right? So now basically I just saved off a copy of the place where I wanted the sculpt. And now if I take this, right, now I'm looking at the difference between the two. And there's a way you can do it. You can do it with the history brush. Um, but I like I like doing it this way too because it shows what you can do. So now I'm going to turn everything off except for these two. these two and then I'm just going to project it back go down to project and project all and then um, it also respects masking so I just want this area Invert the mask there, Smarty Mix Smarty Pants. Just make sure that everything else is masked. 100%. There we go. Maybe we'll give the a little bit more distance. There we go. So now I can preserve um, some of that nice detail that I already had, which is what I want. Um, pretty much okay with where the hat's at at the moment, just just for a block out. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine them all. So this one, okay, I'm just going to make one poly group. This one I'm going to make one poly group. This one, uh, that's fine for now. So I'm just going to merge these down. So we'll do merge down, merge down, and then we'll just do uh, auto groups. There we go. Then merge down one more time. Other groups. 
right, so now it's just one thing. Um, Now I can turn that on and off as I see fit. We'll do the same thing for this one. We'll just merge that down. We'll do auto groups. Cool. Eyeballs. I'm just doing a little bit of maintenance here. Cool. We'll take this guy, throw him down to the bottom. Now I think we can Yeah, he's feeling pretty cool. I think he's ready for a beard. What do you think? I think he's ready for a beard. Let's play with some uh some fiber mesh for a little bit. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just mask out where we want the... Yeah, maybe we'll just give him chops like this. Right? I'll give him chops and then we'll give him a little chin. Tin sh tin chinny sh schmin schminny as well. Okay. And we'll start there. Uh, do, 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 fiber mesh. I haven't used fiber mesh in a while, so we're just going to do this together. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll give him a T, or we'll give him a goat. Uh, we'll leave the mustache off, though. Okay, cool. Let's look at modifiers. We'll say... Length we want a lot shorter. Like a lot shorter. And then we want the thickness, that's max fiber, this length, coverage. We want pretty low, it looks like. Here we go. That's starting to look a little bit more like hair. Okay. Segments. 22 feels like way too much. I think it does need to be a little thick. Whoa, 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 not that thick. Say maybe 12, 13. You can get lost in this forever. <laughs> 10, maybe? I don't know. But this is the beauty of doing stuff live, right? You just you just kind of figure it out. Sure, let's, let's start with that, and then see where we can go from there. So let's hit Accept. Uh, would you like to activate Fast Preview? Uh, no. Okay. So now what we can do is we can go in and just use the move brush. Move. And we can just edit this kind of on the fly. I like when I'm doing um, this type of fiber mesh just look dev stuff real quick um i i try to not get lost in too much of the craziness 
So just try to get something in that is along the lines of what I want it to do. Uh, and then I'll just I'll just get it in, you know. Okay, so then maybe we'll just do the same thing here. Get in this one. Okay. Maybe the same one. Okay, uh, we'll do. <laughs> Easy, buddy. Uh, length, we got to bring down. Where's length? Uh, length profile. Here we go. Okay, so we want just a little bit longer. We want max fibers up more. Oh, let's do this. Uh, we forgot to unmask this. So we don't want it there as well. We just want it there. Okay, then we'll take the preview. Try that again. Should just be there. There we go. All right, so then we'll take uh, the length way down. We'll turn on massive amounts of gravity. Look like worms, that's gross. <laughs> okay, length, tay down. We'll take the fibers up. And then we'll do coverage way down. Let's leave gravity as is, and then I'll just sculpt it into place. Okay, we'll turn the coverage down a little bit more. There we go. Okay, and then we'll just see if we can get some of this kind of into place. Guys, still with me? You bored as I am <laughs> with with fiber mesh? All right. So sometimes, a lot of times, I'll use just uh, moving things around to kind of get the direction of uh, the fiber mesh to be the way that I want it to go. So let's go back over to this this one. That one. I want it to have a little bit more separation. There we go. So that from the front, you can tell it's definitely different. Hopefully I didn't lose chat. I haven't seen anything in a bit, so. Nope, you're still there. Okay, good. can even do a little bit more out and in. 
still trying to follow that same shape direction. We think should we give him some eyebrows too while we're at it? I think we should give him some eyebrows. Let's do it. Let's do eyebrows. I want to do eyebrows. So I'm going to keep it short here because I want to like actually push them this way. Let's do that. Yeah. Do the thing. Okay. I'll just use the same one for for giggles here. Alright, so let's do coverage again is way down. We'll do length way down. do by mask so I really just want it to be on the mask there so by mask is good we'll take the length back up just a touch Maybe just a little bit more. Whoa! Not that much. Uh, two? We'll see how that looks. Alright, set. And then let's sculpt that into place here. I really want, just want to have like this kind of wispiness to it. A lot of times I, I, when I'm just doing like some look dev stuff, I'll a little bit thinner. I typically just get something kind of in place and then use how I'm going to sculpt it um, to finish the shape. Maybe actually this, this pulls off. That'd be kind of cool. <laughs> uh, he's awesome. He's not really evil, but he's more of like maybe he's like the leprechaun merchant. Just gonna steal all your money. <laughs> oh, second. Uh, Manuel says, <clears throat> will you be streaming more in the future? Um, I love streaming. I, I just, work is so busy. I, I have so little time um, to actually do it. I used to stream all the time on my own on my own channel. Um, but my, my time is just so limited with two little kids and trying to... Uh, lead a team <laughs> it's just it's it's uh time is of the essence so my my intention is always to say yes i would love to stream more but reality always kind of keeps me from doing that um so what i what i typically try to do is when i do stream um i, I try to support uh pixel logic um and they've been very supportive of me coming up through my own career and they've been a, a very big influence uh, to me so anytime I can give back to them I usually uh, will try to do so that's typically where most of my time has been okay uh, let's see we got about another fit nah, that's not bad 
An hour, 45 minutes. I think he's, uh, I think he's pretty cool. I think we could take him a little bit further. Uh, my YouTube channel is just, uh, Brendan Isaiah Bankston. Same name. Same bat name. Same bat place. All right, so let's let's just refine stuff from here on out, um, and then we can answer some questions, have some fun. But I think, uh, you know, just just getting in and establishing kind of what the essence of the character is um, is what I try to do first. So from here on out, then I would just I would just begin rendering smaller secondary shapes and. Then, then get into tertiary shapes. Um, I wouldn't, for me, because this is a a creature, um, and it's not necessarily, you know, human proportions. I wouldn't. I'd probably just reconstruct this uh, the face by hand um, for UVs. I really wouldn't. I wouldn't try to. This guy's very specific in in kind of what he is in his shapes and stuff. So um, could try to use the same UVs that, you know, a base mesh would be, would have. Um, but you'd probably push and pull some proportions and stuff. So I'd probably just recreate the UVs. So this definitely pulls a little too far out from the eyeball on the outside here. It makes it a little bit weird. I think maybe we can, well, let's let's play with uh, some shapes a little bit further before we get into the, so the, some more minor detail here. So we'll just start finding some smaller secondary shapes that can support the design that's already there. Well, thanks, Ox. Yep, got to take care of the family, right? Always got to take care of the family. I want to make sure, though, that when I'm doing this, I'm maintaining the 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 levels of frequency of details. Um, so I want to make sure that I kind of emphasize some of the areas that have more of the details with details. Make sure to leave the, some of the open areas open. Um, I didn't know Mike Nash uh, personally, but I definitely knew his work. For sure.
we're just trying to see a little bit more. We'll give them some upper eye. Maybe, actually, you know what? Maybe we'll do a, a little bit of coloring. Let's do that. Eh, actually, I'll, we'll put it up to you guys right now. we got about 10 minutes left. Should we get into um, finer secondary and tertiary details? Or should we uh, paint them up a little bit? What do you guys think? I think I, I could go either way. I love using the um, the inflate brush, right? The um, so using the damp standard to kind of get a little bit of depth, but then right that's just pushing in, so it doesn't affect the overall plane. Tertiary details. That's what everybody loves. That's what I love too. Uh, but then on the other side of it, you want to be able to pull. Right, so if you have the plane like this and you're using damn standard to push in the plane, you can make some cool like inward details, but overall that plane is still the same. So you want to be able to also affect this side of the plane as well. Right, then that really gives the the um, the depth that you want. So after a, like a round of uh, damn standard, I'll come back with the inflate brush and hit some of these like bigger areas, right, to kind of push out. the top of the plane a little bit more. It really gives you this nice feel, right? So it's not it's not just I'm making I'm making details. I make details. Right? And you want to actually come in and take the other half of that and pull. This is a trick I use all the time. Because it's really about the relationship of a shape to another shape. Right? That's when you start getting some really cool depth and stuff. So I use damn standard and inflate on both sides of it to give it a lot of really cool details and depth and stuff. Details, details. Um, how can you keep sharp edges when applying an alpha with snapshot 3D and create a mesh? Um, you know, I don't know everything, uh, Sin, and I, Sinna, and, uh, that one I, I, ca I can't actually speak to. Um, but you are, I would encourage you to reach out to, um, the ZBrush crew, because uh, a lot of times they can help you with those types of things. Okay, so I'm, I'm getting to a point where I need more detail. So the question is, where do I go from here? Do I want to um, continue with Dynamesh? Dynamesh, Dynamesh. He is only 380,000. So I, I could ratchet him up another. Or I could use um, the Sculptor's Pro, which is fun. <laughs> What's up, Donald? Definitely not Blender. Um, so I can use Sculptors Pro and just go in and add some more details and then sculpt on that. Right, that was just... So um, uh, sometimes what I'll do is I just want it in one area and I, I like everything else. Like, maybe I want more details in the face. I'll just come in and with Sculptors Pro on, 
all come in and smooth because what that's actually doing is it's smoothing and adding geo in those places all right and then i can come back and just turn sculptors pro off and then now i can play in these areas without it having to affect all the other areas So I give this inner part some depth. Um, I want to make sure that the place that I'm sculpting, if I so if I go and do this, I I really want to make sure that I take the whole area that I want to sculpt and just give it a good once over with this with this method, because once you start, oops, oh, that's that button. Once you start sculpting again right if you're sculpting and sculpting sculpting and then if you get outside of that area you can see how the the difference in um i like that line though uh the difference in detail so i just want to make sure that i i do the whole entire area so that i don't get into some weird artifacting issues. So I'm just going to clean up the eye here. Let's push all this in. Then come back with, uh, say, the H polish brush. If I want to kind of clean up these edges a little bit, I can just do it do it manually. So I want to make sure that I have enough thickness on this bottom lid. So I want to maintain this curve fairly nicely. Let's give him a crunkle. Um, I think the perpetual the perpetual license of ZBrush still comes with two two copies. Um, it'll typically will be you can put one on your um, laptop and one on your personal computer. So I'm just gonna clean this up a bit. Actually, I feel like his eyeballs are a little bit too big. That's here or there, though. So let's um, let's start getting into some details. All right. So typically, when I once I start going up, um, I'll I'll do the same thing. I'll just start getting some secondary stuff happening. All right. You can use alphas, you can use whatever you want for this. All right, then I'll come back with inflate. And start pulling these out a little bit more. Give him a nice upper eyelid here. It's a fat pad.
So I'll just take some time to just start getting a little bit more detail. Takes time, right? Takes lots of time. Then maybe what I'll start doing, let's actually correct this top eyelid shape here a bit more. Right, it is this is the time. One a.m. We'll stay. Thanks for staying up late with us. Appreciate it. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming by. This is actually um, this is about where we're gonna wrap up anyway. So um, I I probably will I may take this guy a little bit further on my own time, but um, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Then maybe what I'll do is to get some drag rack, maybe we'll throw some alpha on here and then we'll just start down my Z intensity a little bit and just start breaking some of this up a little bit. You can get a lot just from using all of the stuff that comes with ZBrush. And then I think there's a new, is there a new details brush? Oh. I think there's like a new enhanced details brush. D? Nope. Uh, where was it? Yeah, thanks for coming by, Alex. Appreciate it. Snake cactus. Hope you got some good stuff out of it. Fracture. Nudge, chisel, uh, is there anything in here? Cloth, crumple, crumple you could probably do. Sometimes you, you can use these to just kind of give you happy accidents, you know? Crumple's kind of fun. Well, thank you. Maybe we can, some of this stuff will bring back out. And then you can now also use like morph targets and stuff like that to do it. Come back in, add a little bit more. But then you get into, okay, now all of this detail is like, right, I'm kind of stuck in this area. So what I could do, maybe we'll come back to like here, put this guy back on. We'll just, we'll just enhance this area. We'll just do the whole face here. I think that's everything. Yeah. 
Hey, just go from there. All right, we gotta, I gotta call it at some point. <laughs> I can just do this forever. I gotta go hang out with the family. I gotta be up soon from their naps. But yeah, it was, uh, it was fun. It was fun. I hope you guys um, had some fun. I hope you guys learned some stuff. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed the Leprechaun. <clears throat> Just going to steal a lot of your money. <laughs> All right. Uh, yeah, we're, we'll, we'll, we'll call it there. That was fun. I um, hope you guys had fun. I hope you guys learned a couple things, but most of all, I hope you're inspired to go make your own cool stuff. So if you'd like to, um, follow along, hit the like button on uh, YouTube, if you're on YouTube. Uh, follow if you are on Twitch. Um, there's lots of other really, really awesome artists. So uh, uh, keep tuned to the Pixelogic channel. And um, yeah, we'll see you soon. See you guys.